Hi guys, it's Crystal. This is Emerson Aurora Design. Today we're going to do a rhinestone skull um, tumbler. I started off with a spray painted black base. I bought this um, applique, it's like a sticker, um, on Amazon. It's by Martha Stewart. And we're going to use these color shifting paints. I purchased these at Hobby Lobby and they have a really neat cover sh color shift. Um, there's a blue to green purple, there's a pink uh, that shifts to blue and purple. That's kind of the running theme with this, these paints that I found. I'm also going to use this metallic teal from Artist Loft from Michaels. Um, I was just experimenting with this cup. I wanted to uh, create some, uh, the paint for the base to look similar to the rhinestones in that sticker of the skull. So I'm going to do a dry brush technique and I'm going to just dry brush these paints on and uh, in various uh, areas to get the desired effect that I want. one of those cheap chip brushes. I like the uneven edge that it gives. Um, and I'm going to start off with this pink here. I'm going to dab it in the paint and then rub, rub it on the um, paper towel and this will help it give a dry brush effect. I like the grain of the bristles um, almost like I'm doing a wood grain. It obviously doesn't turn out like a wood grain but it gives it some texture. And you can see how that pink has a purple uh, and blue tint once you put it on that black base. That's what's neat with these color shifting paints. They're also like a chameleon type paint. Um, you can see that it's leaving the lines on the paint there and that's what I was going for. I really wanted this to be like a textured paint. ahead and let that first layer dry. I'm going to go in here with the blue. Um, I'm just going to continue layering these in different um, different ways. I want the colors to all kind of blend and uh, give the cup a lot of texture.
here I'm just putting the paint directly on a paper towel and dabbing the paint around in different patterns. Like I said, I just, I'm just going to continue to layer, layer, layer. Um, I was trying to just break up those lines a little bit. Uh, the paint goes on with like a white tint to it, but as it dries, that color shifting metallic really sh uh, shows through. And it, this cup is so satisfying to look at when it's finished. I just really love those chameleon color shift paints. So here I'm just putting the paint directly on the cup. I wanted a little more of a concentration of that pink right there. Um, <laughs> I use so many different ways of putting the paint on this cup. It's just got a lot of layers, but I really wanted it to look almost like a patina, if that makes sense. Um, but it is still the uh, color shift paint. So I guess it isn't really patina, but um, anyway, enjoy. So here it is on my turner. You can really see the different textures on that paint. It turned out really pretty. So now I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of resin on. And I'm going to mix up these mica, paint, uh, mica powders that I uh, received in a sample pack. They are actually thermal color changing micas. Um, there's, I think I used three different ones. Um, one is black, but when heat's applied, it turns to red and then blue, and there's a couple other ones. And I'm going to use this um, Color Shifting Glitters, Mermaid Bay, and Lethal by theglittercraze.com. Um, I want everything about this cup is going to be color shifting. So that is the purple thermal mica. There is one that is black and I think one is like a green teal. Um, I thought that thermal shifting micas would be neat. It's my first time using these, and you can see as I'm going to do it, once I apply the heat, that they actually work. But unfortunately, the thermal micas don't work, or at least they don't didn't for me after I applied a top layer of resin to it. Anyway, um, Let's just see how this turns out. So I placed a uh, base layer of resin down first. I want to have some movement with this cup, so I added uh, almost like a flood coat to the base. And now I'm just mixing up those micas. 
not, you don't need a whole lot. A little goes a long way with these, um, with this galaxy style cup, marble style galaxy cup. Um, so I'm just mixing these up and um, we're go I'm going to lay them down on the resin in a swirl pattern and you'll see. So I'm running lines of the colors in a swirl pattern. Those are my that's my favorite direction to do. Um, the micas are they're mixed kind of thick, um, so they won't move a whole lot. Uh, one way to remedy this, as you may have seen in some of my other videos, is once I lay those down, I'll go in with my finger and kind of smudge them the way that I like. You know, it just gives me more control with that swirl. I didn't want this to turn in, uh, I didn't want those colors to take over the cup because I worked so hard on that base and I really wanted that to show. Um, so you'll see me lay these down and then I'll go in and kind of smudge them a bit to thin them out and uh, go in the pattern that I'd like. Um, like I said, <laughs> I have a tendency to overdo it and not know when to stop. Um, so I was trying to be as careful as I can. So here you can see me applying that heat and you can see that thermal, the thermal mica is changing color. Do you see that there? Which I thought was really, really neat. Ultimately I thought that once this um, cup was finished it almost worked like a mood ring whereas you would touch it and the stripes would change color. but. Now, unfortunately, it didn't work, and like I said, this was an experiment. So um, I'll have to find different ways to use that thermal mica. Uh, I think that the resin layer was probably a little too thick. The top layer was probably a little too thick for it to have um, any color change with holding the cup. But this cup turns out really pretty in the end. Um, you know, sometimes making cups is trial and error, and it's you know you just got to have fun if it's not fun then what's not worth working with So here, when I use my heat gun, you can really see that mica change color, and it, uh, it looks kind of neat, doesn't it? So here I'm going to add the color shifting um, glitters, which are really neat. Um, one is like a green to blue, and the other is purple and blue. Um, I just wanted to put them in random swirls like this uh, to make it look like a galaxy. I used this little spoon <laughs> that I had and um, just to try to keep it so that the whole thing doesn't become uh, glittered. When you place your glitter on your tumblers like this, especially if you have a thicker 
layer of resin, um, the glitter will move. This does migrate a little bit, but it's perfectly fine. It's the look I was going for. These chunky glitters are absolutely just stunning, and it really adds to the color shifting quality of this cup. Then I want to apologize in the background. You probably hear my dog drinking from his water bowl and eating his dinner. <laughs> I'm, all right, well, that's just my life. <laughs> so well, here is the tumbler. Um, this is after I applied another layer of resin over that glitter layer in the micas. And you can see how pretty those swirls turned out. I really love the contrast and uh, how shimmery it is. It's, it's really, it exceeded my um, expectations. So here is that sticker. It's a pre-made um, rhinestone sticker. Um, <laughs> and the colors match perfectly to all the micas and glitter that I've placed. Sorry, my dog's eating. <laughs> you know, he's, being, he's eating his dinner. So I'm gonna lay this down. Um, it actually peels up just like a sticker, which makes it really uh, easy to lay down um, instead of making your own rhinestone design like that. I guess you could do that. But um, these were pretty cheap. I purchased them on Amazon. Um, they're Martha Stewart rhinestone skull sticker. You can search for that and um, it just lays down really neat. I thought it was kind of a, a neat thing. That's the whole basis for the cup. So I just want to lay it down straight and um, it just looks so cool. I just love it. So once it's placed, you can leave it as is and then just um, put a layer of resin over to secure those rhinestones. Or you can do what I did, that um, underneath the rhinestones is sticky. As you can see my finger, I'm kind of pointing that out, but it's sticky. So I thought to add a little contrast and to help that um, design shine, I am going to put some magic dust on the sticky areas. This works out perfectly. I didn't have to use any adhesive. That sticker already has sticky. It's like double-sided tape, basically. So I'm just putting a thick layer of that magic dust. This is from the glitter craze. It's just a micro-fine um, holographic white glitter. And I'm just brushing it on into crevices. It ends up working really well because it helps delineate those rhinestones from the background of the cup. So I'm just going to take this large soft brush and brush off any of the excess glitter. 
It's nice because it doesn't stick anywhere other than on that double-sided tape with the rhinestones. You want to make sure you brush off all that excess so that way you don't have the little glitter everywhere. And you can see how pretty that is. And it helps those rhinestones to stand out from the background so you can actually tell what the design is. And here's the finished product. I did add one more layer of resin to top it all off, and you can see how pretty it turned out. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Like and subscribe, and you have a beautiful day. Thank you.